We're here with Shrisha, one of DevHead's resident hardware design experts. Hey, Shrisha, so why do developers have so much trouble selecting a voltage regulator for their device designs? Hi, Brandon. So choosing a voltage regulator, specifically LDO, can be very challenging for beginners as there are many parts available in the market from the same and different vendors. So since there's so many parts available, it seems like it might be easier. Why not just choose one of the most popular voltage regulators or LDOs out there? Often, developers go with the LDO part that is very popular or one which has high availability. And they may face issues during the product design related to size constraint, thermal problem, power supply noise, or battery drain. So, so to help the designers understand the problem better, I have prepared demo on LT Spice for voltage regulator, specifically LDO. Let's assume that we are designing the device with these parameters. So, my device should use a lithium ion battery and it should run as long as possible. So, a device mainly consists of a microcontroller and a sensor circuit. A microcontroller can operate from 2.5 volts to 3.3 volts and a sensor circuit can operate from 3 volts to 3.3 volts. This device has a protection IC for battery which cuts off the battery at 3 volts and the device can consume up to 20 milliamps at peak current. We are choosing a linear voltage regulator here, specifically LDO for voltage regulation. In the linear regulator, you have your reference, which sets the reference for your entire linear regulator. Then you have an error amplifier here, your feedback circuit and the pass element. A pass element mainly consists of a fixed resistance and a variable resistance. The fixed resistance is what is mainly responsible for low dropout voltage. So when you're trying to use a LDO for battery application, we need to understand the battery discharge curve first. So you have here uh, a standard battery discharge curve of a lithium ion battery. The, at 100%, the voltage is at 4.2 volts. And when you read at 80% of the charge, the voltage is at 3.7 volts. And this continues for almost about 30%. And then you see the dip in voltage again, where at zero volts, you reach about a voltage of 2.2 volts. This can vary depending on the battery's data sheet. So you need to study the data sheet first and the discharge curve. I have selected two parts here. One part is from linear technology and another is from analog devices. My first part, which is LT3117, this is 3.3 volt version. So this is a very popular uh, device, largely available, has high availability and very popular among uh, devices which use this. And another is um, ADP160 series. Specifically, I have chosen ADP162. So this is a very specific uh, device, which has a very low dropout voltage. So I want to, I will compare these two devices in LT Spice and show how choosing the correct part to your application is better. So here I have my first part, which is LT3117. So this is the part which is largely available and has uh, been used in a lot of devices. So let me simulate this for our application first. So as you can see, my battery voltage range, I have set from 4.2 volts to 3 volts. And my current I have set as a maximum of 20 milliamps. So the output voltage should be 3.3 volts. Let me start my simulation now. I will choose my input first, probe it first, and then I'll probe my output. My input voltage is 4.2 volts, about 4.2 volts, and my output voltage is already below the expected 3.3 volts. So it's already not regulating properly, as you can see, and I have barely started my operation. So as you can see, this is not a good part for the specifically battery application. So let me change some parameters as well. Let me show it because if my analog circuits and my microcontroller would still be working right now. So if I go back to my simulation and uh, put it at my 80% of the battery. 
which is about 3.7 volts so if i take this and if i simulate this so as you can see my input is at 3.7 volts and my output is already below 3 volts so this is not good for my analog sensors which i have put but my microcontroller would still be working so if i go to about um so let me put here about 3.1 volts. When my battery is at 3.1 volts, which is about 10%, uh, 15% of my battery, my output voltage has already fallen below 2.2. It is at about 2.1 volts and my input is about 3.1 volts so this is a very bad regulator for our application and this condition my battery would still be on because the protection circuit is still working fine it has not cut off my battery but my microcontroller is already stopped working because it has a uh, working range from 2.5 volts to 3 volts 3.3 volts so it has already stopped working and my analog circuits are not working at all so the sensors are not working at all let me take a good part which can uh, handle our uh, requirements. Here I have my second device which I have selected. This is ADP162 3.3 volt regulator. Let me simulate this. So my battery is at 4.2 volts right now and my expected outcome is 3.3 volts as output with about 220 milliamps. So if I simulate this as you can see at 100% charge my input is at 4.2 volts about and my output is spot on 3.3 volts in full stay uh, full charge condition my device is working properly both my microcontroller and my sensor circuits are working fine right now let me put it at 80% of the charge which is about 3.3 volts Sorry, it's about 3.7 volts. As you can see now, my input is at 3.7 volts and my output has fallen little below, but it's still about 3.3 volts if it's rounded off. So my devices are still working fine, both my microcontroller and my uh, sensors. Now, let me put my device at about 20% of the charge, which should be around 3.3 volts. If you see now, we have our input at 3.3 volts and our output is still about 3.28. So there is a drop of about 20 millivolts. So as you can see, this is a very good uh, LDO for our application, which has a very low dropout voltage. And I can bring it even below near 3 volts, which would be around 10% of my battery. So let me real quick change the parameters again to about 3 volts. As you can see, my regulator input is at 3 volts and output it is providing me about 2.98 volts. So my device is still functioning properly. My sensors might have turned off, but my microcontroller is still working fine. And below this, my protection circuit would turn off itself and protect the battery. So here we have two devices, which has a clear winner in our case, which is ADP162 device. That's some good stuff there, Shricha. So obviously there's some quick and easy ways that you can evaluate various voltage regulation components um, using LT Spice. Now, of course, even with the good part, the analog devices part, there's a certain point at which the battery is just not going to be supplying enough charge to keep the device powered. And there's nothing the LDO can do about that. So 
you're probably going to want to be able to predict when that's going to happen, right? So you can take action and you know either replace or recharge the battery. Uh, how do you do that? What's the next step? So to determine the battery life, uh, I have prepared an as a set of demo using LT Spice, where we will explore how the quiescent current affects the battery life. Very good. So until then, if people are interested in finding out more information about LDOs and voltage regulation in general, where should they go? For more help or to learn more about choosing the correct part for battery application here, specifically LDO, you can visit the DevHead demo repo where the contents of this demo is stored or find me in DevHead's Discord server at Srisha N97. He's at Trisha N97. I'm at Techie Lou, and you can find both of us and all of DevHead's resident engineering experts in the DevHead's Discord server, which is linked to on screen and in the description below. We'll see you in the server.